tonight, I'm joined by Crisis, who's our producer and host. We've got Evixium as community manager, Kit Fox, who'll be your play-by-play caster, and Disconcur and Godlike Phoenix, who'll be rotating analyst casters for tonight. So a giant welcome to everyone playing tonight, and a hello to some new faces joining us, who are Fairy Tale, Coronary, and Team DC. I hope you guys have fun. So the format tonight will be four rounds of Swiss, which are best of one matches. And then the maps that are chosen tonight will be from the official HTC map pool. The top five teams will qualify for Thursday's playoffs as opposed to the usual four due to Nomia's absence. Uh, Nomia will be actually going overseas to play in a mid-season brawl over in Sweden. They still do have a chance to qualify in the ESL one day comp. So don't worry, we'll be seeing our Nomia boys soon, but make sure to cheer for them while they're overseas. And tonight, we've got some awesome viewer giveaways. We've got two Diva skins and two Genji skins. My out. And um, without food, I uh, pass you over to your casters for game number one. I'm going to hand it to you, Kit Fox. Thank you very much, Vandy, for that lovely introduction. I'd say you got hosting pretty down pat. But yes, we're going to go into Tomb of the Spider Queen first. We have got Ethereal versus Capital. Ethereal will be on the blue side. Capital will be on the right. We're going to get that coin toss underway. I will be your play-by-play -play caster. And joining me in the analyst position, it is a very, very good evening to the man with the wizard-like beard, GL Phoenix. Thank you very much, Kit Fox, and good evening to you as well, and all of our viewers. And we are very well set up for a good game right off the bat, because Ethereal and Capital, both these teams were kind of edging around the middle of the pack, and with a lot of those higher teams already automatically qualified into the Thursday playoffs, there's a lot more chance for them to actually get those higher seedings. So as we see at the start of the drive, we're on Tomb of the Spider Queen, we could very well expect to see some of the wave clear picked up early on as we do see the good Darm band away and the Anubarak, even though he did get a slight bit of a nerf, he is still very strong. Anubarak, very, very high tier at the moment. It's no surprise that they take him off the board straight away. Obviously, they don't want to deal with him. Like you said, probably going to opt for a very strong wave clear combo. And there we see KT being locked in straight away. Gul'dan being taken off the board from Team Capital. So it'll be interesting to see what their first pick is. Valor actually does very good on this map as well. Hell, on any map, she's got the full kit and caboodle. And now the double pick over at Team Capital. Who do you expect them to pick up here? Well, there's still quite a bit on the board. As even though it's like the two big wave clear mages in the Gul'dan and the Cal thus have already been taken off the board from uh, Ethereal. But as you mentioned, the Valor is still very good. Greymane is still uh, highly prioritized as just regular uh, damage dealers. But if we're looking at the tanks right now, there's only the Anubarak taken away. And as we can see, the Malfurion, like just going to the support pool, Malfurion is still very good. And uh, for not now. sure for how long, but he's yeah. still a very high prioritized pick. Yeah, we say for now because if you have had a chance to peruse over those patch notes that are incoming very, very soon in the Malfiel patch, uh, Malfurion's getting a little bit of a nerf, but Johanna now being picked up by Ethereum. We might actually see a new support come into the meta. Hey, we might see a lot more Brightwing. Wouldn't we love a bit more Brightwing in our lives, GL? Oh, well, I'm not too sure about that one. I mean, she <laughs> could be very useful. Uh, in those bigger maps, but her healing can be a little bit on the on the lower side. So if uh, Solar Healer, a uh, Brightwing, I'm not too sure about, but <laughs> if the Malfurion is going to be taking a hit, might as well start throwing some of these extra supports into the mix. But as you said, the Johanna has been picked up. So well, uh, even when it comes to tanks, her wave clear is actually quite good. With the Condemn and with the Punish, she can clear waves quite efficiently, especially if she's got the help of the Kalthar. So already, the side of Ethereal have got that wave clear in mind and they've already started out quite well in this draft Actually, very wow. strong draft for the ethereal lads now rainer being locked in as well able to do you know a decent amount of single target dps he does have a very easy displacement as well able to knock a, a, quite a few uh, uh heroes out of the ultimates mosh pits one that comes to mind uh, but now the second band is going to go over to Capital. Gul'dan already being taken off the board. They are still yet to pick up some solid DPS. So it'll be interesting to see if they go one mage, 
one auto attacker, maybe even the double mage comp. Diablo very, very strong on the front line, does have good heals in Malf. Interesting to see if they go for maybe an off tank or maybe even a second support to complement him. Who knows, but they're going to ban away Oriel now because they know that Ethereal are still yet to pick up their support champion. And now Ethereal's turn to ban one away. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that Oriel ban. I mean, there's still a lot of supports on the board. And just to be honest, I mean, yeah, the Oriole could pair up quite well with the Rainer, but it's not the same kind of hope engine that you'd get out of something like a Gul'dan or even a Valor. So I'm not too sure um, on that band as... Do you see the Chromie band away? Chromie, not good on all maps, but this is one of the maps where Chromie does get a lot yeah. of value. Dragon Breath does deal a lot of damage, especially if you take the talents that spec into it. You can turn Chromie even, even into more of a glass cannon, uh, so to speak. And then I think uh, a little bit later on, she can get that Hearthstone talent just to get away. Uh, but interesting ban. Nonetheless, we go back over to Capital now. They're going to get themselves another double pick. Still need to pick themselves up some damage. So I wouldn't be surprised here if they pick up, like we said before, uh, either a double mage or a double auto attack. And then they're free to go into maybe a Varian or somebody like that for some engage to complement D. Diablo on the front line, or possibly even another, or like a, an off support. But Malfurion, pretty strong on his own, especially if he takes Tranquility. Yeah, he's 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 pretty good in all regards right yeah. now. But, and, and there's still a lot of uh, flexibility that Capital have in this draft right now. They've not really given up uh, too much in, like, they haven't really shown their hand just yet. They probably will see very much how this composition is going to work out after these next two picks. Look at the and the stitches. Nice pick. So, I mean, the Stitches is not a very common pick, but... I like it. I like it, especially when it's paired with the Malfurion, and also just, like, the amount of follow-up CC that they have with the Diablo, and as I said with the Malfurion, the Stitches can get a lot of value. One thing that uh, tends to happen a fair bit when it comes to Stitches is that he sometimes gets put into drafts where there's no follow-up, and so you can hook someone in, but if you don't have the follow-up CC, sure, you can have a bit of damage, but they can just walk away. So... Uh, I like the draft that they put the stitches into, and now that we've seen the Morales, I like it even more. If you can grab that Morales out of position and then just lock her down immediately, they, have a really, they can really start these fights out well. Well, there's three extremely squishy champions on the side for Ethereal at the moment. You've got Morales, Reyna, and Kael'thas. Not a lot of mobility there either. I mean, if Morales possibly would go into a medivac for that quick disengage i mean because looking at their team at the moment they haven't really got a lot of that five seconds now ticking down on the clock like a leoric maybe some yeah. other kind of frontline leoric does really well or Sony, even a Sony. they kind of, kind of fulfilling a similar role as in uh taking that solo lane also bringing this amount of wave clear so uh, it's also something else i can set on the front line because with this johanna you're not necessarily wanting to be the one to engage you're not you don't have the most efficient of engage unless you get the blessed hammer and you can actually efficiently land that but do you, you want something else on the front line with the johanna and that will be the sony will be uh fulfilling that role quite well yeah whirlwind does heal a lot especially when you're trying to farm up those minions or even take down uh you know the spies the minions that come down and try to wreak havoc on your base sonya just all round a good frontliner and compliments johanna very very well they do have a decent amount of damage as well so i really don't mind the comp for ethereal they've got they know what they're going for let's see if they can execute it but so do capital i mean they're putting a lot of eggs in their stitches basket so to speak but if he lands those hooks they've got the lockdown to just make sure any one of those targets dies. It doesn't matter if Mor I, I fully reckon that Capital can outburst anyone that Morales is healing if Stitches lands one of those hooks. Now, Nazebo being locked in for Capital. So, another good all round pick. Good zombie walls. It would be interesting to see if he goes spiders or toads. What do you think he'll go? Well, I think the spiders are just pretty much kind of standard at this point. I mean, toads have been popping up a whole lot more. Last week, yeah. yeah, toads have been popping up a lot more and can do a lot of work, especially if you're going to have this uh, Johanna and the Sony on the front line who's going to be copping a lot of those toads uh, in the face but it's a very interesting kind of composition now on the side of Capital. You have that late game uh, kind of insurance with the Nazebo if he's able to get a lot of those stacks but we'll have to see if they're going to be able to just stand up to the amount of damage coming out from this Ethereal lineup. I mean they've got a really nice 1-4 split on on the Theorist lineup. They've got the four of the Morales, Reyna, Kel'Thas, and Johanna, so they can rotate between top and bottom, or, uh, top and mid, sorry, while the Sony can pretty much 1v1 any of those heroes 
on the side of Capital. So they have a nice setup for them. We'll have to see if they're able to play that out. I like Capitals Draft. I really, really like it. Pa, I'm a little bit biased because I really like Stitches. But let's run through the teams at GL Phoenix. Over at Ethereal, we have got Touch Me, Sorelli, Luminum Greatness, and Crazer Meter. And who's lining up for Capital? Well, for Capital, they... Oh, let me... <laughs> uh, they have Slick Sloth, Fergie Games, Slaw Sovereign, and Ultimo. So two very solid lineups. We've seen these names around a fair bit. They've shown some pretty decent performances. So very much looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. I love the old little game of chess that goes on at level one in this game. It's why I love it. You can engage right off the bat. It's very short runs back uh, to the mid lane, especially on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Not one of the larger maps, probably one of the smaller ones when you compare it to maps like uh, Warhead Junction, so to speak, which is probably, what, the largest one in the game. But, hey, let's not trigger Vandy and get her started on Warhead Junction, as we found out just before, hey. Yeah, she's not a big fan of it, and I don't think there are a lot of people who are, but we are getting into the level one, as you mentioned. This is posturing for any kind of engage, and with this Stitches hook, could very well see uh, someone engage without them even wanting to. It's all on Fergie Games. Let's see what this man can do. He's hiding on the lower side of the mid lane now. Dibbles and Johanna have spotted each other up top. The drone does go down for Malfurion, so not leaving any stone unturned. No hooks so far. KT throws in the flame, striking a Zebo with the wall. And the Condemn comes out as well. Didn't really grab anybody into the blind. KT just throwing throughout those flame strikes, but no hooks as yet, GL Phoenix. A little bit disappointing. Yes, playing it quite safe. Not wanting to overextend just for the sake of fighting, <laughs> not just fighting for the sake of fighting, just wanting to focus on that wave clear, as we said at the start of the draft, this is one of those maps where wave clear is more highly prioritized than on other of the maps, so wanted just to make sure that they have that good rotation between top and mid, and uh, just get those gems stacking up. Crazy meter in the bottom lane doing a lot of damage to Slaw. He needs to be careful not to take a look at some of those tower hits, but Sonya able to out DPS Nazebo at close range. There we see Randy gets hooked in the top lane though. The Condemn is not going to be enough to uh, to trap Fergie games in. So his team is now rotated. Slick Sloth with the Shadow Charge into the wall, but no frags as yet. GL Phoenix so it's about to pop off. I can feel it though. A bit of a subdued early game, but you know that with the amount of control or crowd control on the side of Capital could very well just see things start to explode a bit. KT still throwing out those flame strikes. The bot lane crazy meter still out DPSing slow. Now Valor comes up from the mid lane up to the top, gets the hungering arrow onto Luminum. But the heals are so strong for both of these two teams, Morales and Malfurion, just able to solidly heal solo. And we can see this line coming out again from Sorelli. Finding the target of Stitches needs to land them on Valor to get the most value. Slicks off with another one of those charges. Doesn't go for the throw. Flame Strike getting a double hit there. So if KT has put a talent into convection here, he, yeah, has, he has. So yep. this will be interesting. Yeah, if he's able to get that efficiently and without uh, giving up too much in the meantime, that could be a very, very strong power point should he finish that off. But as you imagine, it's been a bit of a subdued early game. And what we're seeing right now is just the four stack of uh, Ethereal is just efficiently clearing waves and not being in a position where they can get caught out by that Stitches hook. And even if we saw earlier, it's the hook did go down, but there was just not a uh, position for the rest of the team to follow up on it. And I think that Ethereal playing this out really conservatively, but they've got the tools to play conservatively and doing it very well right now. Another stack of convection for Touch Me on the Kale Fast. He'll be trying to get that one very, very fast. Another stack, so he's just building him up while Sorelli provides a great front line. A lot of gems in the bank now for both of these two teams, but no turn ins as yet. Now Malfurion's down in the bot lane. Should the Ethereal lads decide to engage, Capital be without a healer, but I don't think they realize that because he is in fact out of view. Sorelli just on that front line, takes a few hits from the tanks. Sovereign just unable to capitalize there on Valor, but still no frags. GL Phoenix, it's boiling over. Oh, a nice hook. Oh, there we go for it. Fergie Games lands the first hook into the entangling roots of Luminum. Forced to pop safeguard, but in comes Sorelli with a fantastic and damn good line onto Valor. That's what you want to do. Take out the auto attacker. Take out the damage Valor is able to dish out by getting those hatred stacked up. Take them away for another hook. Finds greatness this time, but no entangling roots. No team to capitalize. I think that even caught his own team off guard there, GL Phoenix. Yeah, it was a... That was the key hook that we're needing from the stitches, and 
I have to commend Touch Me on this count bars. Managing to get the gravity lamps onto the Diablo just in time to keep the Morales alive. If the, that Diablo was able to step forward a little bit further and able to start that Shadow Charge into the overpower onto the Morales, that would have been a dead Morales. So very nicely played from the side of Ethereal. Managing to survive that bit of a dangerous engagement right there. Another Condemn into a Punish actually forces the Iron Skin out of Johanna there. So that'll be down for the next fight. They did get the combo off. And now they're trying to turn in are the Ethereal Lads, but Sovereign is on the ball, switched on, gets the multi-shot off, and just stops the turn in. Actually, 21 gems did actually go in there. Now there's a fight about to break out here over this top egg. Now Slick Sloth trying to turn in for the Capital Lads. Sorelli, meanwhile, farming up the top there. Sovereign just peeking at range. And the gems in favor of Ethereal at the moment. Shadow charge into the wall, but there's nobody following up. The Condemn did actually catch Slick Sloth there, but the, uh, the Flame Strike did not. Good Moonfire coming in from Ultimo just to reveal Touch Me to stop any of those cheeky turn-ins. And I think this one's going to come down to how well KT and how he can build up those Convection stacks and actually just get that power spike and start popping heads. Yeah, so far it hasn't been too much happening outside of that one hook. I guess the most exciting thing has been whenever yeah. whenever KT gets, his, gets a hit of that Flame Strike and starts stacking them up. But yeah, we do get the Blue, weaver, the blue Web Weavers. So they are going to be able to use that quite well. They have a decent amount of siege pressure with the Johanna and the Kalthas, and even the Rainer as well. So they've got a decent amount to work with. We have to see how the rest of Capital really try and repel them. 11 stacks Convection, and Rainer's not doing too bad on Season Marksman as well. At 19 bonus damage as well, pumping that in just uh, like the roids that Morales will be giving him later. But now the Blue Web Weavers have come down, forcing Capital to group up. Slick Sloth does take a lot of damage there from, this, from the wave that came out. And we can see a nice split push coming out here from Ethereal. They realize that Capital have to take down these Web Weavers one at a time. So what do they do? They send Reyna and Johanna up to the top lane, build up that XP, knock down some buildings. And this is very smart play here from Ethereal. Yeah, they're doing it very well. Realizing that they're not going to be able to get too much out of the whole wave, so just take what they can. They grab a couple of uh, towers as they get an engagement onto the Diablo. Yeah, we go. It's going to be first blood. Yes, it is. Crazy me to picks up the kill, but it was a fantastic gravity lapse that came out from Touch Me. And poor old Dibbles is looking in, looking at the face of a spawn farmer. Gems. Well, they're going to go in favor of Capital after this one. Fergie, was, well, that's assuming Fergie Games doesn't die. Does have 30 in the pocket, waiting to turn into the bank. You can see Slaw here doing his best to build up those stacks of oh, artifacts. But Gravity yeah, Lab's fantastic and a great condemn. This is great play here from Ethereal. They've managed to get themselves two quick kills. They pinch an early lead here, GL Phoenix. Well, it's about a mid-game lead now. We are at level 10, 16 stacks on Convection as well. Yeah, doing very well for himself, the KT, and this hasn't really been under any threat so far. The most threat he was under was when he was had no mana and they were starting up a fight, but yeah, even though the the Nazebo did die, was a little bit too far forward and got caught out by the rotation. They're going to get another Web Weaver. Exactly. You know, are they going to pinch another Web Weaver? Yes, they are. So this is going like to be two in a row. So huge play here from the Ethereal Lads. Another Condemn manages to catch both Diablo and Stitches. Gravity Labs finds Slick Sloth. He's not going to be able to get away. Hyperion comes in. That level 10 advantage finding its mark. Ethereal now. This is where they start to snowball. This is where they need to capitalize. And it looks like they're going to take down the mid tower here. They've got Web Weavers in coming. Hyperion did its job. Toads are not going to be enough to save you. Blind on Dollar. That's going to be a tower. Yeah, and with Heroics only just now being picked up for Capital, they, they've had to play it very cautiously. Only now that they can really start to make any kind of defense, but now they'll just have to just sit and watch as their base is just getting torn up apart. They've lost the second fort, they've still got that Web Weaver happily going down on the bottom side, and now they just want to push in on this middle. Um, well, they have hit level 10, but Nazebo hasn't actually picked up a talent yet. He's, he's just indecisive, and in goes the Phoenix, laying down the damage, dishing out the hurt. Slick Sloth and Fergie game need to be careful because he's creating Action a great zone. Yeah, they're not going to go down. He still hasn't picked up a talent at level 10. Has Nazebo. Who is that? That's Slaw. Come on, son. Pay attention. He eats. A flame strike as well, so he needs to be careful not to go down here. Sorelli in the front line does pop Iron Skin. Web Weaver in the bot lane doing the work for the team, getting themselves three towers. So without tier one towers, Capital now caught on the back foot, GL Phoenix. Yeah, and as you said, it is just this snowball coming in right now. Whereas we, the back to back turn ins, and they're just taking so many more of these structures. They've picked up, as you mentioned, all of the outer tower, uh, outer forts. And they've now got a three level lead, only two level lead now, they've got 
the talent advantage and they can just keep on applying pressure. Now at level 11, Zebo is still yet to pick up whether he wants Gargantuan or Ro or the other one, but he, he's still indecisive here, GL. But we're under 10 minutes into this game. No camps have been picked up as yet, so we'll see if Gary comes out a little bit later. But it looks like finally camps going over in favour of Capital. They ne Well, they need this now. They need to actually catch up here because they're just so far behind without a tier 1 tower. They haven't even chunked any. Oh, I don't think any of the walls even. For the uh, for the ethereal lads, yeah, it was a lot of it was just on the back of that very early four one split that uh, ethereal have. They were able to efficiently clear waves and rotate to the next one, and just didn't give capital any position to even fight back. They were just forced to fight uh, the minion waves, and they weren't able to apply pressure themselves. So it was a very solid start. And even though it wasn't the most exciting, we weren't getting kills left, right, and center at the th uh, up until level ten like, at least. It, it was a very controlled start by Ethereal, and they're really just snowballing this really well right now. Mm. Ravenous Spirit was the other one that I blanked out before, so sorry to slow on Nazeba for blanking out on your skill. But now, yeah, Gems, Capital have got 103. They're just unable to turn in because map control is in favor of Ethereal at the moment. But here we see he's going for a yeah. little bit of a backdoor at the top one. He's going to get it too. So this is what Capital need just to stem this hemorrhage that Ethereal are just putting on. They're dishing out the herd, another Hyperion's coming in. They want to chunk down this mid fort. Another blind coming out there from Sorelli onto Sovereign on the back line. Hyperion's not gonna be enough to pick up this fort. Slick Sloth comes in with a great Shadow Charge, doesn't get the flip off. Johanna going for the Shield Throw to get out the stun off there. Fergie misses a point blank hook. Ultimo very, very close to death. Sonya now goes down. So the great break there for Capital. Fantastic Ravenous. He was waiting to surprise us, GL Phoenix. He's got himself a triple. It was a surprise package. Sorelli's going to go down now as well. Fantastic charge from Slick Sloth. That is what Capital need. And that has brought them back into the game. Yeah, they really needed that. And now they can start to push back a little bit. Just getting those kills. And that, that whole team fight has really brought them back when it comes to experience. Now they're only about half a level behind, especially once they start pushing down this fort. So they are really back into this game. I mean, yes, they are down a fair bit when it comes to the structure game, but uh, should that last web waver get, well, once these web wavers get taken down, they could very well position themselves for a boss, or maybe, well, I guess <laughs> the other team has respawn, so that might not be on the card, but they are able to completely close that experience gap. So very nice fight there from, uh, from Capital. And they are, they are not giving up without a fight. Should have picked up on the fact that Johanna actually picked up the shield as opposed to falling sword there. So ve got very, very good use there in that fight right under the ford. It picked up, I think, three uh, right next to each other. And that almost, almost won them the fight. But the Ravenous, that Ravenous coming that out. That Ravenous on the back just completely won that fight. I mean, yeah. it, it was a very back and forward kind of fight. But once that Ravenous went down and there was this not really the tools to interrupt that Nazebo. It was just doing so much Ooh. damage and now there's a massive amount of uh, gems on the side of Capital. They could go for multiple turns if they're able to get them in. I thought Fergie had a monster hook there, but the range minion was just in the way. Separating from glory, Apop goes in, doesn't, oh, does actually find two targets. Greatness and Luminum getting that one up, but Hyperion in a great position, as is the Phoenix, goes down, and Fergie Games has actually gone for the Putrid Vile here as opposed to the Gorge, so he uses that in a defensive mode, runs away, and ults have been burnt, but they're still in the fact that Blessed Shield is up as his Stim Drone for the side of Ethereum. Yeah, it was a... It looked like it was just a um, means to force away the members of Capital from getting that second oh, or that back-to-back -back hand in. So it was a, a bit of an investment, but as you said, there's still got a few to work with. And with this very low keep, it looks like the members of Ethereal just want to push they in and just it. take that down. Living Bomb, I think, is going to find it, and it is. So well done. They get themselves... Well, they do have the advantage here, Geo Phoenix, and with that thought, they will actually get a level advantage to its value too. It's level 16, but Slick Sloth actually manages to get himself that flip away. Has Convection been completed? Yes, it has. The double flame strike coming off as well. Luminum forced to pop Safeguard onto Sorelli. He's fighting good blinds here, Sorelli, getting Sovereign nearly every single fight, just neutralizing, uh, well, not not all of the damage, but a majority of the damage that Vela's able to pump out. Yeah, it's have been very interesting fights and now we are into a point where it's just trying to get those handers because we have all of the Ooh. all the coins on the side of capital but they're just not in a position to get those safe handers now that phoenix there that is absolutely a no-go zone
for Capital, and it looks like they want to keep on going with the fight. They're starting to get their heroics back, but it's, it's quite a bit on both sides as it here comes the engage. Sorelli going balls deep with the condemn into the shield glare, tries to punish, and it's actually gonna get slick slot here. Another condemn! He picks up the kill. Sorelli now puts the Nikes on, oh. goes for a run, throws out the blessed shield. This is fantastic play from the front line here from Ethereal now. Fury and now bites the dust. And this is huge. Another putrefile in defense has come from 30 games. And there's another kill. So Nazebo now falling down. Boss is on the cards. Yeah, they have the position to do so. And it doesn't look like there's really much that the members of Capital can do about this right now. They're just left to tend to their waves. They've got this double catapult wave in the middle lane. But I guess the best thing that they can do right now is get Fergie Games onto this bottom side. Get that hand in so they at least have those web weavers to try and defend with. Another hemorrhage, it's, it's coming out, they've hit the Achilles heel here of Capital of Ethereal, but like you said, the bandage job with the web weavers now just coming out and just going to stop a little bit of that flow, but this boss here will actually do a bit of damage, they're going to get all five members up at the top there, Art Capital, but Ethereal are forced to defend as well, so let's take this time to just look, look, look at the talents here, GLP, as we said, Convection has been completed, as has Season Marksman, so a lot of damage being pumped out now here for Team Ethereal. Yeah, they have a lot of damage on their lineup, and with this very solid front line of the Johanna and the Sonya, they're, they're very safe to move forward with their damage, but it's just a matter of can this Nazebo get all of that value from the Ravenous Spirit that we saw in that earlier fight? We saw it used again, it didn't really work out as well because it was used in a bit of a... Uh, in a little bit of a chase scenario and it wasn't getting too much done, but we'll have to see if they can actually get one of those good fights again. It looks like they want to try and get an engage. Shield Glare coming out from Sorelli, finds Slick Slop again, he needs to be careful here to Slick Slop because last time he did that, he did get actually taken down and we see again he walks over the top of two flame strikes. so now he's at half health before the fights even started Geo Phoenix, but I think they're going to disengage, yes they are. Yeah, just tending to those web weavers, making sure that they can't get any value out of that entire turn in on the side of Capital, so really nicely played here from Ethereal, not going too far forward, they had the lead when it comes to experience and should they just keep on playing this very cautious game that they've been doing for a lot of this game so far, they could very well get hit 20 in time for the next big uh, engagement. It looks like they just want to grab some of these towers, just to get some of that standing experience, but it looks like some fight, the, uh, some flame strikes again, some massive value on the side of Ethereal. Yeah, the Shield Glare and the Punish, uh, sorry, the Condemned Shield Glare Punish combo coming out from Johanna, the old face roll. He's doing work on the front line here from Sorelli. I'm really liking the way he's playing, but I'm also liking the way Touch Me's playing with those flame strikes as well, getting the boosts off. Conviction, it's just such a strong talent if you can complete it. It's borderline OP. And now Sorelli is in a bad position, gets charged away. Iron Skin is pop, and his team doesn't care. The hooks come out now into the Reign of Vengeance. Hyperion comes oh, finally, the Ethereal lads go in. Fergie Games was another future file. Puts the the Ravenous again! The of fun. Here comes the Ravenous! It's going for Luminum, he goes down. Greatness with the Stim Drone, forces himself into the hill. Oh, the Stim Drone hill, Hungering Arrow is not going to get one tick. There's still a fight going on. Crazy Meter getting the Seismic Slam off. Now into the Whirlwind, chasing down Ultimo, but his heals are going to be too strong. But who comes out? Oh, it just misses from Fergie Game. Crazy Meter did actually blow Berserker's Wrath. Now he's forced to run away. He'll be disappointed with that. That was such a close fight. So many members so close to going down. That little duel at the end between Greatness and, uh, like, Sovereign. And yeah, it was so close. It is an auto attack build coming out from the Valor, so did have very good trading uh, damage, but just that adrenaline rush at the end from the rain, it was just enough to keep him alive and managed to get that little 1v1 in the end. And it was so close to being such a great fight for Capital, but in the end it was just not enough and they will be able to def uh, hold on to their base for a bit but they are starting to lose out here and there and it's kind of it's Chipping still very out. hard for them because level the next fight is not going to be on even uh, talent tiers Le level 20 is coming up very soon for ethereal and they have to be very careful with uh, where these next engagements are coming in because if it's going to be stalled out the gem eventually the gems are going to go over to the side of ethereal they will be able to get those hand-ins and 
once that comes in, it will be very hard for Capital to actually handle it because we've seen in the past couple of Webweaver phases, they haven't necessarily had the safe wave there to just deal with them, and it looks like we're getting a bit of a heavy push coming to the top side. Yeah, there was minions pushing down the bot lane, sorry, camps pushing down the bot lane, and that caused Ethereal to go, hey, you know what, we're going to take up the top lane while we force Capital to deal with this. They're going to get themselves a cheeky fort, Hyperion, so good at chunking down uh, forts and heroes, and to be careful, especially uh, if you can get off a good gravity lapse or something like that, and that, wow, so exactly what we're Ooh, talking about, but an even better hook comes out from Kurgan Games, displaces touch me, Apoc goes in, the double stun comes off of Phoenix right now, doing the work on the front line, there's another Ravenous, and here we go, it's hunting down Crazometer, Slaw on the back line, left unchecked, the Ravenous Spirit getting it done again. And well done to Capital. They are not out of this yet. They've lost the tower. Sorry, a fort in the top and the bottom lane. But GL Phoenix, they're not done. They are not out of this yet. They are they are fighting for their life right now because any kind of even fight or even a or God forbid a lost fight, and they could very well just lose this game. Yes, they have lost that keep on the top side, but they just need to be very careful about how this boss gets played around because if that boss gets taken, there's a there's an easy path onto the core for Ethereal, but they did manage to turn that fight around really well. That hook at the start from Fury Games onto that top class really did help out, but now that they know, well, Ethereal know that this boss is going down, so they're just going to use this time to just push onto this third core. They, they don't really care about that boss, but it's going to be a bit of a risky trade because that is a very low keep on the top side for Ethereal, and that boss could really pose a threat. It could really pose a threat, but so can three waves of double minions, and they don't care here, GL Phoenix. They're gonna go straight for the core. Phoenix goes in, Gravity Lapse forces onto Slick Sloth. Forced away here, Hungering Arrow goes in, Sovereign with that multi-shot. Getting it done, didn't actually go for multi-shot build, actually went for the Hatred build. The hook narrowly misses the mark there. Morales throws out the grenade, still ults in the bank, but did actually force the Blessed Shield out from uh, Johanna. So it'll be interesting to see how they go here. Slaw still yet to pick up another level 20 talent. He's uh, a talent he on his best attribute, but having a spirit, I'll tell you what, that is one of them. Yeah, he's getting a lot of value out of that, and now has the Violent Perfection, so his damage has absolutely spiked, and that boss has given a bit of value. It's a nice hook onto Greatness. Oh, fantastic hook onto Greatness, and like you said, they marched that, that boss into the top lane, didn't actually lock him down, so now Slick Sloth copying a lot of damage on the front line, yeah, but there's one hero down, it's Bala, so they're without a chunk of damage, and now Slaw goes down as well. This is not good for Capital, but they went too deep. Too, too deep. Fan. Oh, good friend who comes out from Fergie Games, but it's not going to be enough. He does have that's a Soulstone good. Resurrection. That, yeah. That'll be game. Yeah, that's going to be it. They tried too hard to be aggressive with that boss, but they just... They stepped a little bit... They overstepped their boundaries. They had a good hook onto that Rainer, but they weren't able to follow up on the kill, and when they just stuck around, they just took way too much damage from that KT, so there's only going to be <laughs> Slick Sloth on this Diablo alive, thanks to his Souls passive spawning within five seconds but he is not going to be able to do anything to the whole five members of ethereal wailing away on their core and that looks like it's just going to be the game one of the night well he's going to die valiantly and i don't think they actually even care phoenix goes straight onto the core and like you said it is going to be chunk city yo chunk chunk city diablo goes down and that is game number one here of week two of the game star qualifiers to ethereal it started out slow, GL Phoenix, but I tell you what, it got there and it got there good. Oh yeah, I think slow burn is the the right term to mm. use for that game. And emphasis on the burn because once that KT started getting going, my god, did he start dishing out some damage, doing so much work, getting those convection stacks out pretty quickly, and it was never really at any kind of threat for the majority of that game. It wasn't until like the real late game when those fights started to really. Uh, turn around and some of those really good hooks coming in from Fergie Games that he really started to get put under pressure, but he was so free a lot of that game, so very well done from them. Just while we're touching on the players' performances, like you said, touch me, 85k damage, just under 86, best in the game by far. And I'll tell you what, Rainer did a great job with the siege damage, able to chunk down those forts with Hyperion, but we're going to pick an MVP, Jail Phoenix. Who are you throwing your hat in the ring for? Well, I think I kind of gave it away a little bit early with the praise I was giving to that Cal last, but yeah, I think it will go towards Touch Me because he was so safe in getting those stacks that he got it in a reasonable amount of time. So a lot of the time you'll see KTs with Convection, they play way back and uh, you'll see early fights and they're not able to get too much done because 
hey, they're trying to conserve their convection stacks. But he was very cautious, uh, got those stacks efficiently. And when he started getting those uh, ganks off with the gravity labs, hitting some really impressive gravity labs at the really high priority target. So really like his play. So I think my MVP is going to go towards him. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Touch Me as well, but I do want to give a special mention to Sorelli there on the Johanna. The punish shield get glare combo on that front line was just creating the pressure, and we talked about how Touch Me was able to play forward, and that was because of Sorelli, but you, you just cannot turn a blind eye to what this man did. He pumped out 137k siege damage, just under 86k hero damage. So Touch Me, you've picked yourself up a nomination into the GameStar MVP program. The results are coming in. Shout out to all the new, the viewers, new, young, old, and I'll tell you what, it is heating up here in the GameStar studio, but I'm going to pass you back over to your host for this evening, Vandy. Thank you very much, Kit Fox and Hunter. That was a great round one on Tomb of the Spider Queen. So for those of us who have just tuned in, we saw Ethereal picking up the win right there against Capital. And um, just looking at the other results that have come in since, we've also seen um, Team DC actually had to forfeit the first round due to not having enough team members. So Milkshake did get the win for that. Nova and Out won against Onyx Esports. Scripps and Scrubs beat Alaskan Pipeline. Top 10 Dad Betrayals beat Coroner Esports. And We Met at Bunnings took a game off Sweet Dreams. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw our first raffle for the night, uh, and that's going to be for Genji. So if you haven't already, quickly get a sneaky um, exclamation mark GS hot into the chat, and we're going to draw the first one. Don't worry if you don't win this one. There will be another one after game number two. So let's see who's going to be the winner for this one. catch up so don't worry doing the magic behind the curtains and congrats fat 94 who won a genji skin that's a lovely farewell to see him off to sweden with so as we said stay tuned because there is another one to give away we will open the raffle up again and it'll be the same keyword so that's exclamation mark gs hots to enter the raffle to win another genji hero bundle and uh now we're going to set up the lobby and get straight into oh sorry we're going to cut to a break i'm getting ahead of myself for the action going to cut to a break and then we'll bring you game number two which will be on dragon shark 